Hi, in this video we're going to talk about uh, two topics that are uh, related, covariance and correlation. So let's start with covariance. Uh, in order to bring up the definition of covariance, I want to start with uh, reminding you what the variance of a random variable definition was. So we define the variance of the random variable as, uh, in words, this was called the uh, second central moment about the mean. It's the expected value of the square of cap x minus mu, where mu is the mean of, uh, of cap x. And, and remember, that's, uh, that's not typically how I would calculate a variance. I would usually calculate a variance by taking the second moment minus the square of the first moment. But we show that those were equivalent to each other. Okay, so now the covariance is going to be kind of a generalization of this when we have two random variables. So we take the covariance between random variables cap x and cap y, and it's defined to be the expected value of the, uh, of the product of cap x minus its mean with uh, cap y minus, minus its mean. And just as we went through and it showed that the variance could be reduced to uh, somewhat, you know, in, in many cases an easier calculation, the same is true with, a, uh, with this, this covariance definition. We go through the exact same process, so if you want to see the process, look back on the, uh, the video for, uh, for variance uh, in, in, the, in the single, uh, 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 single variable. Uh, videos. Uh, but uh, the process is going to be the same. And what I'm saying is you can uh, find another e expression that that will give you the, var the covariance by, uh, and it's defined by taking the expected value of the product of x times y minus the product of the expectation of x and the expectation of y. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that if you, for the random variable cap y, you replace the random variable cap y by the random variable cap x so that you're taking the covariance of cap x with itself, then you get exactly the variance definitions. In other words, the variance of a random variable cap x could be defined as the covariance of the random variable with itself. You could first define the covariance between two random variables and then just say, well, the covariance between a random variable in itself is the variance. So let's look at some other properties of variance. Uh, I'm sorry, some other properties of covariance. Uh, first of all, that we, we just established that if you take the covariance of a random variable with itself, then you'll, you'll get the variance of the random variable. Now, remember the variance of a random variable is, is, is never negative. Well, that's not true with covariance. Covariance between two random variables can be negative, so just uh, be careful there. Uh, also notice that uh, there's some symmetry between using the random variable x, uh, how you use that cap x and cap y. So the covariance between cap x and cap y would be the same as if you interchange the rows of x and y, cap x and cap y. Notice if uh, one of the random variables was just a constant, uh, you're going to get zero. So let me, uh, l let me illustrate why that would be true. So I have highlighted in red the, uh, the equation that I'm going to use, and I'm going to use that equation with the cap y being equal to just a constant, cap, uh, a constant k. So I'm thinking of k as being a constant. Uh, and since k is a constant, uh, on the right-hand side of that last equation, uh, I can factor that k out and just get a k times the expectation of cap x. And then uh, on the uh, second term, uh, let's see, on the second term of that equation, that last equation uh, on the right-hand side, the expectation of k is just k. And so in both of these cases, uh, in both terms here, you just get k times the expectation of cap x, and so they add out to be zero. Uh, so uh, the covariance of, of, a, uh, of a random variable with a constant is going to be zero. The next fact has to do with independent random variables. So a lot of our pro a lot, in a lot of our problems, the, pro the, the random variable is going to be independent. And so when you have independent random variables, uh, the fact of the matter is that the covariance uh, of, the, of, of the random variables would be zero. Uh, that's not hard to see if you'll rem remember that uh, for independent random variables, cap X and cap Y are independent random variables, then uh, the expectation of a product is the product of the expectations of the random variables. And that will show up in red up there if you uh, substitute in in red that, well, because they're independent, cap X and cap Y are independent, you just get uh, the same term term in the, the, the first term is exactly the same as the second term that you're subtracting from, so you'll get that the covariance is zero. The next uh, thing that I want to talk about is how would you calculate the uh, covariance of something that you know, kind of looks more complicated, like, an, like a cap AX plus cap BY, uh, the covariance of that random variable with the covariance of another random variable, C times cap W plus D times, times cap Z. And what I want to try to convince you of is that if you, uh, uh, if you can do a little college algebra, then you can do these covariance calculations. And so uh, uh, if I want to calculate a covariance of something that looks like that, what I'll do is I'll, I'll take the random 
random variables and I'll just multiply them together like I would in college algebra. So I'm just multiplying these two random variables together as though they're, uh, I'm multiplying these two binomial uh, or, or you know these two uh, uh, expressions, binomial expressions uh, together. And, and, uh, and when I multiply those two expressions together, just college algebra, FOIL is what I learned it by. You multiply the first two and then the outside two, the inside two, and the last two. And, and you multiply them together that way. Well, if you can, if you can do that, if you can multiply these uh, binomials together, and, and, and even if you have more complicated things like trinomials, if you can multiply them together using college algebra, then you can do covariance calculations because the, uh, the result that you get is an indication of, of, of how the covariance uh, 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 operator works. So, uh, so for instance, uh, what I would get here is if I took the covariance on, uh, of, of a, a, an A times cap X plus B times cap Y with a C times cap W plus a D times cap Z, then look in red, look at the, look at the relationships here, you know, look, look at the, the pattern. Uh, I would get A times C times the covariance of X times W, uh, A times D plus, times the covariance of X times Z, uh, B times C times covariance of Y times W, and then B times D times covariance of Y times uh, cap Y times cap Z, add them all together. Just like, uh, again, just do, do what you would do in, a, uh, in college algebra by multiplying the things together, and then uh, that's how the covar covariance operator is going to work. It's because of the linear of the, uh, of the uh, uh, exponential, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, 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 expectation, uh, expectation operator is linear, it's a linear operator and because of being a linear operator it's going to behave in the same way as if you just multiply them together. Okay, so uh, let's look at a remark. What happens if you take the, uh, you know, just a, a similar uh, kind of a special case of this last remark is how would you calculate the variance of a cap X plus a cap Y? Now, um, so uh, using the first bullet point, I know that the variance of any random variable is the covariance of the random variable with itself. So I can write this as the covariance of X plus Y with itself. And then I'll uh, revert back to my... Uh, my college algebra, uh, 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 you know, expertise, and I'll I'll write that uh, x plus y times x plus y is x squared plus two xy plus y squared, and so I know then that the covariance of x cap x plus cap cap y with itself would be the covariance of cap x with itself. Uh, plus two times the covariance of cap x with with cap y, and then plus the covariance of cap y with itself. Now, uh, if you look at the red, what's in red uh, and in green, the covariances that are in red, I'm sorry, the covariances that are in red and blue uh, are covariances of a random variable with itself, which is just the variance of the random variable. So, uh, so what I get then is that the variance of, of cap X plus cap Y, it's not equal to the variance of cap X plus the variance of cap Y. I already knew that because I knew the variance wasn't a linear operator. I can correct it though. I do so now. This is telling me then that it's off by a fact by a term of uh, two times the covariance of cap x uh, cap y, and so uh, so that's the expression that I get. So uh, again, this is another indication that variance is not a linear operator. On the other hand, this is a very important uh, observation. What if cap x and cap y were independent random variables? In that case, the covariance of cap X with cap Y would be zero by one of the bullet points we, we just talked about. And so in that case, the variance of cap X plus Y would be the sum of the variances. So when you have independent random variables, the variance of cap X plus cap Y is the sum of the variance of cap X plus the variance of cap Y. You gotta be careful though to make sure that you're in, you know, you, you know the, the random variables are independent if you're gonna use that, uh, use that expression. Uh, I also want to talk about, well, what about uh, cap X minus cap Y? So we've got to be a little bit careful here. So uh, again, let's uh, look at the variance of cap X minus cap Y. Uh, I know that it's the covariance of, of cap X minus cap Y with itself. And again, I'll uh, uh, resort back to my college algebra expertise and uh, square out and uh, cap X minus cap Y. I get a cap X squared minus two times cap X cap Y plus a cap Y squared. So that tells me that the covariance then, that last covariance is the covariance of cap X with itself uh, minus, minus two times the covariance of cap X with cap Y, but then plus the covariance of cap Y with itself. Again, the, the covariances in red and blue uh, become variances because they're covariances of the random variable with itself. And I'll get that the variance of cap X minus cap Y is uh, the variance of cap X 
minus 2 times the covariance of cap x with cap y plus the variance of cap y. Uh, finally, if you look at independent random variables, the covariance term falls out because if uh, cap x and cap y are independent, in each case the covariance term uh, falls out. And so uh, you get this kind of uh, somewhat, uh, you know, it might be surprising to some folks, some, some somewhat surprising result that the variance of a cap x plus cap y and the variance of cap x minus cap y are equal. They're both equal to the sum uh, of the variance of cap x plus the variance of cap y. Okay, this video was called Covariance and Correlation, so I, I need to talk a little bit about correlation. The correlation uh, is also sometimes referred to as correlation coefficient. Put coefficient in parentheses because sometimes people don't use that word. They just say the correlation, but uh, some other times they might say the correlation coefficient. It's the same thing. So the definition of the correlation uh, between random variables cap x and cap y is that it's defined to be a ratio of the covariance of cap x with cap y and, and divided by, so it's a ratio with the numerator being the covariance uh, of cap x and cap y. And in the denominator, you get the product of the standard deviation of cap x and cap y. Now the fact is, a, a fact that I'm going to just point out here is that the uh, correlation will always be, give you a value between a minus one and a one. And so let's look at some properties of correlation. One should be obvious to you, and that is if the random variables cap x and cap y are independent of one another, then the correlation is going to be zero because the covariance in the numerator, the covariance is going to be zero. So that should be kind of kind of obvious to you at this point. So for independent random variables, cap x and cap y, the correlation uh, coefficient or the correlation is, is zero. Uh, let me mention um, that uh, you, the, the reverse, the reverse uh, 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 implication does not apply. So the converse is not necessarily true. So you can have, uh, you can have, just because you have a correlation uh, that's equal to zero does not mean that you have independent random variables. You can still have dependent random variables. Uh, so just be careful that you're not using this implication in the wrong direction. Um, and now let's look at, uh, let's look at uh, what the correlation is giving you a measure of. It's actually the degree of what's called linearity between the random variables cap x and cap y. And so let me explain by that by looking at a specific case. If, if, uh, so again, you're, you think of the discrete case. You're going to have values of cap X and values of cap Y. Maybe you have a, a joint probability table or something like that, but you'll have values of cap X and cap Y. And since you have values of cap X and cap Y, you can think of them as an ordered pair and then graph them on an X, Y plane and an X, Y plane. And if the points, then when you graph, if the points lie on a line, on a, on a, a line with positive slope, then the correlation is going to end up being one. That, that, that's going to indicate that, or that's going to give you a correlation of one. If the points on the line, if the points, when you graph the x, y as ordered pairs, if they, uh, if you, if you draw a line and, and the line, if there's a line that goes through the, all of those points, then your correlation is one. Now, it doesn't mean that the slope of the line is one. The slope of the line could be 10 or it could be 0.1 or it could be anything. But if it's got a positive slope and all of the points lie on that line, then the correlation is one. And then if the line, uh, if the points don't lie on the line, there's kind of a line of best fit. You think of it just kind of picture a line of best fit. And if that line of best fit has a positive slope, then the correlation is, is greater than zero. The correlation is going to be positive. If the line of best fit, when you graph those ordered pairs, uh, if the line of best fit has a positive slope, then the correlation is going to have a positive slope. And the closer the points get to lying on the line, if the, again, if the points are actually on a line, then uh, you get the extreme value that, uh, that the correlation is one. By the way, I should mention, I should have mentioned this before, that symbol that I'm using for the correlation is the Greek letter rho. So this is uh, rho with a subscript cap X and, and comma cap Y. So uh, if, if the, uh, the, when you graph the order pairs, if the order pairs lie on a line, then the row value is one, the correlation is one. If, the, if they're close, very close to lying on a line, then the row value will be close to one. And the farther away they get from lying on the line, the, the uh, lower and lower the correlation will be, and so the correlation will be reducing back down towards zero. And again, that's all assuming that the line of best fit uh, has a positive slope. And then you just kind of reverse the inequality. Uh, I'm sorry, you reverse the pluses and minuses and stuff like that. If the if the uh, uh, 
If the points lie on a line with a negative slope, then the row value is a negative one. And again, that does not mean that the slope of the line is a negative one. It means that the, uh, the points uh, lie on a line. They're, they're actually on top of a line with a negative slope. The slope could be a negative 100. The slope could be a negative three, whatever, uh, but the correlation, the row value would be a negative one if all the points lie on that line. And then uh, if the points don't lie exactly on the line, but they're close to the line that has a negative slope, then the row value, the correlation will be close to a negative one. But the farther and farther away the points get away from being on that, on that line of best fit, the farther away the points get away from being on it, but still the line has a negative slope, then the, the row values will be uh, uh, getting larger up to a zero, from, larger from negative direction larger, and then they'll be approaching zero. Okay, so finally, let's look at an example. Um, I, I just kind of wanted to give you a measure of what this, uh, or, or an idea of what the row values are giving you, but uh, the, the sample questions that I've seen are, are you know, uh, uh, I think they're pretty straightforward, actually. So let's look at this SOA problem. I have, uh, we have an act actuary analyzes a company's annual personal auto claims, cap M, and annual commercial cl auto claims, uh, cap N, the analysis real, reveals that the variance of cap M, uh, the variance of the uh, cap M is the personal uh, of the auto claims. The variance of the auto claims is 1,600. The variance of the commercial claims is 900, and the correlation between the auto claims and the commercial claims is 0 0.64. So they gave, me, gave us the correlation here. We want to calculate what the variance is of the sum of uh, M, cap M and cap N. So do not add 1,600 and 900, the variances of cap M and cap N. Uh, don't just add those together. I'm sure that's going to be an answer choice, and you're going to be wrong in this case uh, because uh, we, we know now that the variance of cap M plus N is uh, it's not a linear operator. You can't just add together the variance of M plus variance of N. Variance of M plus N, use your out college algebra skills, multiply out an M plus N, and you'll see it's M squared plus two times M times N plus N squared. And so that indicates to me, or, or that you know tells me that the variance of cap M plus cap N is the variance of cap M plus two times the covariance of cap M with cap N plus the variance of cap N. Now I can plug in the 1600 and the 900 for the variances of, variances of cap M and cap N respectively. So I know that my answer now is going to be 2500, 1600 plus 900, 2500, 2500 plus two times the covariance of uh, between cap M and cap N. So this is where I need to use that the correlation is given to me and the fact that the correlation is the covariance divided by the product of the standard deviations. And so when I um, uh, this time what's, what's given to me is the correlation, so the numerator is the unknown there. I got a 0.64 uh, in the, and then the numerator is the unknown. The denominator, be careful to use the standard deviations and not the variances. So I took the square root of 1600 to get the 40 and the square root of 900 to get the 30. And solving for the covariance there, I get a 768, 768 for the covariance, and then just plug that back in. Uh, uh, to get the uh, to get my answer, so the variance of m plus n uh, would be 2,500 plus two times the 768 or 4036. Okay, so that does it for this video. I'll see you in the next video.